Welcome. Today we take a journey through a horrifying tale. Allegedly true by those who claim to be there, but you be the judge. Stay around until the end and I will attempt to decipher its validity and offer my own opinion. This is the werewolf in the cabin. Diane and Keith Williams lived in the small rural town of London in Ohio. They had finally saved enough money to buy their dream home, a small cabin nestled in the trees with the woods trailing off from their backyard. Both were accustomed to the rural lifestyle, with Diane having lived in the outback all her life and Keith an avid hunter and outdoorsman. With their four-year-old daughter Raven by their side, the trio enjoyed the happiest times of their lives so far. That is, until late summer 1981, when the horrors began. Keith worked most days, and would frequently spend more than 12 hours outside the home. This left Diane and their daughter alone for most of the day, or at least they thought they were alone. As the sun slowly set on this cool summer's evening, Diane began to hear the noises. Rustling at first, but stomps and gravel stirring coming from the yard. Her large kitchen windows offered swaving views of the property, but still she saw nothing. Deers were commonplace out here in the wilds, and she had seen the occasional dog roaming her land before. But these noises went on for days, and she never saw anything to confirm an animal's presence. Finally, whilst washing the dishes, she heard the noises louder and more distinct than before. It was now obvious something large was out there walking across her gravelled drive. Scanning her property through the large windows, as she haphazardly continues her chores, she finally sees something to confirm these noises weren't in her imagination. There, ten metres or so from her window, were two golden glinted eyes staring back. The eyes looked odd, and were perhaps taller than she would have expected. As the seconds passed, the eyes faded away deep into the darkness of the trees. Time passes, and her chores drag Diane from the kitchen to the dining room. She slowly begins to forget the eyes that had so recently observed her. But they had not forgotten her. She starts to feel uncomfortable. Something unknown was making her ooze with fear. But as she approaches the condensed, mist-stricken window, she spots the cause of this discomfort. There... Staring back, barely inches from the glass pane, were two humanoid gold glowing eyes. Someone was at her house unannounced in the middle of the woods. The shock briefly broke Diane's resolve. She dropped her cleaning utensils and screamed. Leave me alone, she shouted. After a short pause, the humanoid being seemed to oblige. Its shadows began maliciously dancing around as it rose high above the window pane, blocking what minimal light had previously broken through. This man was tall and all-encompassing. Her windows felt like no obstacles to his presence. Slowly, the man begins to move. Circling the house, his shadowy dark tendrils poisoned every room as he passed. But this was not the saving grace Diane had wished for, for she realised where it was going. Closer and closer the back door became, footfall after footfall, until they stopped. Walking through his front door, after a long day's work, Keith vocalised a long sigh of relief. His days were long and tiring, 
and returning to his home brought him great joy, even if he were too tired to conduct any of his old hobbies. As he hangs up his coat, his flustered wife comes barreling through the kitchen. There's someone in the yard, she says. They're trying to get in. Without time to think, Keith barges through his home and launches his yard door open. But nothing unusual greeted him. The cool breeze and woodland noises he was so accustomed to were the only things he met out there. Consoling his wife and reassuring her whatever was out there was now gone, the two returned to their home and their evening activities. Days go by, but Diane continued hearing the noises. But now she was more vigilant in her observation. She was becoming unsure if they truly were just animals or if the golden-eyed man was constantly stalking her. Regardless, she had now begun a ritual of closing the blinds early as soon as the darkness began to creep in. No one could look out, but more importantly, no one could look in. Her home didn't feel so safe anymore. One day, after putting her daughter to bed, she returned to her living room to continue reading her book and relaxing. The lights were on and the ever-present noises echoed outside. But again it happened. The noises became a powerful forte of terror. Peering over to her window, she noticed the shadow was back. He circled her home once again. Slowly, she stood up and turned off the light, putting herself into perpetual darkness. But with all the lights off, the full moon now illuminated the man's reflection through the blind. He was disfigured, large and towering way above the window frame. He moved in an awkward frame-breaking stutter as he brought his head below the apex of the frame. His golden beast-like eyes pierced through the thin veil of the blinds. As silently as she could, in her terrified state, Diane reached for the phone and dialed the police. The rurality of her home meant no help would come quick. She crawled to a central point in her home where she felt invisible to the penetrating eyes. There, in silence, she begins to ponder. Was this really just a man or something else entirely? She remembered back seeing the blurred outcrops of his head as it peered down and thinking about it now, it seemed way too large for a normal man's head. His dimensions made no sense. Barely an hour's pass and Keith, returning home once again, found himself blinded by lights and sirens. He had arrived only minutes after the police. But during this time, they had swarmed his property and found no signs or evidence of anyone or anything being out there. Diane felt she was going crazy. The snow had begun to fall. The cool breeze of summer had now been replaced with a cruel chill and the nights began to linger on well into the morning hours. As Keith opened his front door to head to work, the perpetual darkness of the secluded woods greeted him fondly. But this time, unlike any other, he paused. Something caught his attention. He thinks he sees something odd to the rear of his truck. But rubbing his eyes, he spots nothing unusual. Jumping in, he places his bag on the passenger seat and pays little attention to the world revolving around him. But something was moving in the shadows, malicious yet restrained. He turned his ignition and immediately the whole yard lit up. There it was. 
frozen in the rear window, a mass of skin and furs. Keith cursed as he grabbed his torch and jumped out, ready to confront this thing. But by the time he had fumbled himself onto the snow-stricken ground, it was already too late. Whatever had been there had now vanished. Keith was not naive, nor inexperienced. He had hunted this land many times, and he knew every animal you could find out here. But none of them fit the description of what he just witnessed. He was unsure if this was a disturbed man dressed in long robes, or perhaps something far stranger. Vigilant, he approached the location where the entity had been, and what he witnessed shook him to the core. In the snow lay large 14-inch tracks. Humanoid in inception, but with the claws of a beast protruding. He heard a pattering of fuds toward his home. A large rumble, and then something brushed past the trees. The idea that this was just a disturbed man now almost seemed like fantasy. Keith saw how this thing had managed to elude him only moments before. A trail of crude footprints traversed his home, disappearing over his roof. Whatever this thing was, it had been watching him from up there, and it had no trouble traversing the steep slopes. Trying to find the exit point where the beast had parlayed with the ground was troublesome. Keith circled his home further and further away, looking for a disturbance in the snow and a sign the beast had left his roof. Finally, at the rear of his home, trailing off into the woods, two indents were visible in the snow. Twenty feet from the walls of his home lay the beast's fresh-laden tracks. Keith knew of no animal that could leap such a distance from so high. Enough was enough. With a sense of purpose and adrenaline spiking, Keith called his hunting buddy Dennis, grabbed his gun and followed the tracks into the woods. <laughs>